we're going to talk about the economy. And, you know, unless you're a dummy and you haven't been anywhere lately and you haven't noticed, I walked out of the Dollar General the other day with $75 of groceries, which meant uh, bread, milk, eggs, much of nothing, for $75. And um, today, according to Fox News, your kids are going to be living with you forever because they can't afford rent, they can't afford housing, they don't know where to start. And I can remember starting with, and you're going to die laughing because you started this same way, a double wide. Yeah. On one acre, a very nice 1980, no, 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 Sherry, go back, 1975 <laughs> double wide. Oh, my gosh, I have to go back. A 1975 double wide on one acre of land, $10,000. What did your double wide cost you? Well, the one we bought was repoed. Okay. It was a 19... Actually, ours was too. That's so weird. Yeah, it yeah. was a 1994, I think. And this was in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And Holly and I walked in and looked at it. It was repoed. It had red shag carpet in it. Mm -hmm. and ours had yellow shag. <laughs> and cats had pooped all over that place. Oh, my gosh. And Holly and I were like, man, we can buy this thing for $24,000. That's what okay. we paid for it. Because okay. this was kind of in the mobile home apocalypse that mm -hmm. took place in the mm -hmm. year 2000. And my mother-in-law cried for 45 minutes because oh, yeah. I was going to put her daughter in it. But I'm going to yeah. change the carpet. We can paint oh, yeah. it. It'll look oh, yeah. okay. It won't smell like cat poop anymore. <laughs> no, it won't. No, no, and, no. And quite frankly, there's times I've said that was the best place that we've ever lived. Yeah, yeah. Well, ours went from, it was $10,000. Citizens Bank of Ball Ground did the financing. two fifty one twenty two a month. Yeah. two fifty one twenty two a month and um, lived there for five years and then sold, no, didn't sell it. Used it for rental property while we bought our first brick home. Had to pay $11,000 down, had to pay 12 and three quarters percent interest. Yeah. But the house was $55,000. Yeah. You can't buy an acre of land today in Cherokee County to build a house on for 55,000. Well, you probably can't put a, a a trailer on it either because they're a double wide the because of the government regulations. The rules and regulations have changed yeah. so much. But according to Fox this morning, you as a financial advisor are going to be up against it with the younger generation. Yeah. We haven't prepared them. We weren't prepared for what happened in my lifetime. No. I didn't think I'd see this happen. I thought everybody would be able to buy a home. I thought everybody would be able to finance their dreams. I thought it was going to be a walk in the park, and it has not been, and we know why. Right. Well, it's all government policies is it what is. it is. You know, and They've rammed them. Everything is so full of 18,000 pages of this, 2,500 pages of this of yeah. crap. You know, and Mark Twain, who was an unbelievable writer, uh, historian, and just, just brilliant. I've been reading a lot of his quotes and mm -hmm. just the wisdom that he had that stands the test of time. He knew what was going to happen. You know, but he was terrible financially. Mm -hmm. he, he made horrible financial decisions, but he penned the quote that, you know, how do you go bankrupt? And it's slowly and then all at once. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the problem is, is, you know, our, our government left the gold standard back in 1972 when Nixon closed that gold window. Uh -huh. And, you know, the immediate reaction on the other side of that was all the inflation that occurred through the 1970s. The Fed Chairman Volcker came in, you know, really did what was right and drove interest rates up substantially to stop that inflationary mm -hmm. pressure. And some of it had to do with the baby boomers that were, you know, kind of entering the workforce and entering the purchasing um, uh, during that period of time. But what we're experiencing now is 30 years of inflationary policies and weak individuals and corrupt individuals mm -hmm. that are in charge mm -hmm. on both sides of the aisle that um, that that have printed so much money that that those at the top have become wealthier those at the bottom have been and it's eviscerating the middle class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and and then you've got all these government regulations and you've got the cost of business and the fees and the impact fees that has priced our younger generation and and quite frankly anybody out of a home it's hard you know it's hard. because 
because um, unless you've already got one, mm -hmm. and unless you've you know, inherited done really a large well, amount of money to pay down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just think of it now to get your kids through. I think the this is an estimate, y'all, so, so please forgive me because we have no clue what we're going to talk yeah, about when no. we come in. The so reason we're like, talking about it is because when I saw on Fox News today that everybody's going to be stuck with their 28 yeah. to 35 year old kids, I said, been there, done that. Yep, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, think of it. I mean, right if now. If your children called and said, Daddy, we can't make this house payment, you'd let them come home. That's what we oh, do. Oh, absolutely. I'd let yeah, them come home. Yeah, that's what parents do. But yeah. at the same time, I'd charge them rent if they came home. Yeah. Yeah. Because because you you have to teach them to manage. You have to teach them to manage. Mm -hmm. I'd charge them rent and I'd put in an account for mm -hmm. them to to save it. It's funny that you said that because my mother let my daughter and her husband move in Mama's house, and charge them. That she didn't charge them. She said, "I will let you live here if you save a hundred dollars a month." Yes. And so they put a hundred dollars a month in a savings account, and they were able to buy their first home because mother helped them but she didn't help them by giving them something. She let them use it in order to teach them to save, and it worked out great. Well, that's, that, that's the whole purpose. Now I say that, Katie and Tyler are in between. They move into their apartment in Augusta for medical school in uh, late July, and they've been living with us for the past 60 days, and I'm yeah. not charging them. Well, if but, my kid was married to somebody going to medical school, I'd pay them to live there. I'd be so proud yeah. of them. So, <laughs> Daddy, just take that for what it's worth. But, I mean, it's only for three months, and yeah, it was in yeah. between. Their their yeah, their lease yeah. came up. so I'd just be singing zippity doo -dah. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, here's the problem that we're dealing with in our country. You've got tons of uh, illegal immigrants, and I have no issue with immigrants coming in mm -mm. but we want we, we want to filter for the best that comes into right. our country because right. because I've, I've looked um, at expatriate I have researched purchasing land in other countries and what it would be to get a, mul a, a multiple visa and expatriate mm -hmm. right I am concerned enough about what's going on in our country from a long-term standpoint that I told Holly my my goals would be to have a farm that my kids could flee to if mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. the inevitable result comes about that could be turnkey that you could mm -hmm. operation it and if things got bad enough a piece of land in another country that's that's uh, friendly with the u.s and y'all if you'd asked me that i would have been thinking about this 10 years ago even five years ago five years ago i would have told you no that you're crazy there's no way that i would think that no no but but you know, I mean, here's the thing. One thing that I have learned, uh, I thought we were going to have a whole lot of more problems than what we do, you, you know, 10 years from now. So one of the things that we've had to learn in the investment process is you have to play, play the game by the rules that are forced upon you, mm -hmm. okay? And, and you, you know, and you have to be able to hold two concepts in your mind at the same time. The, the trajectory that we're heading in is hard times for our country. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you when they're gonna happen because there's so many factors that could kick this can down the road a little bit longer. So you have to think of it like this. Have you ever been on the way to the gas station and you forgot to fill up and it and that that light's on and you know you've got approximately <laughs> 50 miles to empty? Were you with me Saturday when I was tied up in a knot? Because honestly, I was, oh no, I'm not going to make it. Who do I know close by to call and bring me gas? So you were there, right? I was right there. Now here's the you thing. You know why? Did you, why? Because gas was higher in Gilbert County than it was in Pickens. So you decided to keep to going? I was to get back to Pickens <laughs> County. <laughs> so, and the light was on the whole way. <laughs> so here's the thing. You knew that at some point you were going to run out of gas. I right? did. I did. But I didn't. But it's, Im it's impossible to understand exactly, it's it's possible to know, impossible to know exactly when you run out, right? Yeah. So you've got all that stress that's going. Oh my in. God! You have no idea. Y'all would have died if they'd have videoed this. Yeah. It would have gone viral. I was like. Ugh. So I had that happen one time. I was in college. I was headed to Charleston. Now for me, I just wasn't paying attention. I was listening yeah. to music, singing attention. down the road. You know, I didn't have all the weight of the world on the shoulder to me then. I'd yeah. windows down and sing like crazy. And I'm in the middle of nowhere in South Georgia. Yeah. And I look down and it goes, well, you know, light comes on. Well, you don't have 
uh, we didn't have cell phones back Isn't then. Isn't it like a you. gallon left or so? Maybe three gallons left when that light comes on. Well, I think that at least on the book that I read, because every now and then I, I want to know, mm -hmm. it's approximately 50 miles to empty. Yeah. Well, when you drive like I do, it's probably 30. Yeah. You should have seen me driving. I was in the old lady lane going 45 because I said <laughs> anything over 50 uses more gas. So it was, it was hysterical. I do that too. It was hysterical. Well, in this case, I could, you know, uh, I had gone, I don't know how far. Back then, I didn't know how far you could go. So I'll never forget, I'm coming down a hill and I'm off the gas, driving as slow as I can, and the car starts sputtering. Oh, no. Right? Oh, uh, no. Well, the gas station's at the top of the hill, maybe a mile away. Oh, no. And it's, and I'm like, well, at least I only have to walk a mile. And I hit the bottom and turn up on the hill, and, and I get enough momentum to make oh, it into the gosh. gas station. Oh, right? Oh, gosh, yeah. The problem is the, the, um, you know, low gas light is on economically, and we don't know how much longer it'll be, but, but the problem is, you know, drug addiction is ridiculously mm -hmm. high. Yeah. Um, um, suicide rates are ridiculously high. And gonna get worse. Divorce rates are getting even more, and all of this is, is just the extra pressure started. that's put on, right? Yes. So our kids, you know, you get up the government, government's like, oh, I've got the best economy in the world that's oh ever. Gosh. And, you know, they tell you what you want to hear. And kids are taught on Instagram, do this. They're marketed to, this is what your life should look like. This is what your life should look like. And then when reality sets in, about the time they get to college, about the time they get out of college, mm -hmm. you know, and all of this go woke, go broke, you know, mm -hmm. we're such a narcissistic society today that it's all about me, that, that we've got a whole generation in the baby boomers that are heartless when it comes to what they're doing to their kids and grandkids, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Where you have a generation before, I can't tell you how many times I've had a gen, you know, people come in, they're like, man, I can't believe that my, you know, this is 20 years ago, can't believe that my parents saved this much because mm -hmm. that generation had been through the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. Whereas now people are not scared of debt, they're barring themselves into oblivion, and the ones that have the purchasing power are just going out and buying up everything that they can possibly buy up, um, you know, because rentals are good. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that's a bad mm -hmm. thing. I have a problem with institutions coming in and competing. Oh. But, you know, is I, it, it, I will bring you a video soon. You know what happened to us, and you know that BlackRock came in and scarfed yes. up something that we were supposed to sell. When you see, and I document it because I want documentation. When I go to Congress yeah. and I say, Congress, look at what you've allowed to happen in my little tiny town, I document it. It looks like a danger zone. It's yeah. horrible. And from the maintenance to the calls the police are getting to the drug you know, to the evictions, to the this and the, I, I'm gonna write a book about it. Yeah. Because we allowed this to happen. Because we allowed BlackRock and all these places to come in and scarf up everything and dictate the market. Yeah. And it took first time buyers into a position of paying $1,900 for a, a little place to rent. So you have to get people to live with you. Then you over park and you take up more parking places. You have nine dogs in an apartment or a town home and your neighbors complain all the time because nine dogs bark and fight and argue. You got three roommates with all of them have animals. It's crazy. Yeah. They have turned a beautiful place into a disaster. Yeah. And it was allowed to do. And if we don't change the direction that our country is headed in, it's just gonna get worse. Well, I've, I left Atlanta, I think about this, it's like I left Atlanta yesterday. I left Atlanta 54 years ago. 54 years ago, I saw all of this coming down the pike. And, you know, Mother was in Tate, and that's mm -hmm. how I ended up up here, because Mother left Atlanta and went to Tate. And then when I left, and, and leaving that sweet little brick house community in, in Morningside and coming up here was a bit of a, I was like, what am I gonna do? I worked for a yeah. law firm in, in Atlanta. There were two in Jasper and they both had secretaries that had been there a hundred years. Yeah. There was nowhere to work. And thank yeah. God for the Woodbridge Inn or I would have gone back to Atlanta and that would have been a whole nother story. Yeah. But I saw it coming then but it was the crime and the traffic. Those were the yeah. two reasons I left Atlanta, nothing else. The crime and the traffic. And today, 
when we laugh about it, um, I mean, we have people downsizing, coming to ball ground, buying million dollar homes because they've sold their house for a million four or a million six. And it was a quaint little home in Morningside, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, but they planned. Yeah. They planned. They did. Their home's been paid for for years. They've been putting some money in the bank. Do you know what gold was yesterday? Oh yeah, I know. 23? 24. Is that not crazy? Yeah. Well, I'm talking about physical gold, yeah. not Do you know what silver was yesterday? Uh, silver was $34 for the Silver Eagles and $33.50 for the Canadian Maples. Okay, once upon a time, silver went to about $18, and mm -hmm. I thought that was just the biggest number ever. And I had, oh, hope my grandmother's not watching, I had some sterling silver tea services that I <laughs> sold <laughs> because I said, golly, this will never happen again, so I sold it like $18 took it to a local jewelry store and sold it. Mm -hmm. And then I, yesterday when I heard what silver was, I thought I would have gotten double. But that yeah. was, golly, 30 something years ago. So. I bet here's a statistic that you did not know. What? So prior to 1965, our silver, our currency, you know, and I'm gonna plant this, so let me come back to that. I remember as a kid when my parents would travel overseas somewhere, they went to Mexico a couple times if I remember correctly, you know, they would have the extra change that was left over and I was In those dollars, in, in, those in that currency. currency. Yeah. You know, whether it was Mexican pesos, right. I can't remember where else they went. I just remember um, them going somewhere and giving me some of these uh, currencies. And because uh, I was a curious kid, I like mm -hmm. to I like to know things like that. So my mom gives me these coins, and I'm like holding it against American coins, and I'm like, man, these things are light. Like, are they really worth anything? I chunk them in the corner. As a kid, yeah, you know, and I don't know. I was probably 10, 12 years old. Yeah, I, I could tell the difference in the value. So, if you have a pre 1965 coin, okay, or a 65 to 69, I believe it is, that's less. So. Prior to 1965, our coinage was like 90% silver, mm -hmm. okay? So a Kennedy half dollar, your dimes, your nickels. I may be wrong on the purity, but it was, it was a higher content mm -hmm. of silver. You actually had metal in there. So $1,000 in face value of coins. So, you know, if you had 50 cent pieces today, mm -hmm. $1,000. If you take $1,000 of 1960, just to make, pick a year, of Kennedy half dollars to Walmart, they're only going to accept it for a thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much the silver content is worth in that thousand dollars in today's value? Because our coins today are not uh, uh, fully silver. Since 1969, they're really not. There are other metals in there, and I don't mm -hmm. know what they are, but they're not silver, so they don't have a metal content value. Guess how much 19, pre 1965 thousand dollars of face value? I don't know. Double. $19,000. Wow. Yes. No, I, what? That's how much the silver content wow. is worth. It's 715 ounces. Oh my gosh. It's, I think it's 715. No, it's not 715 Okay, ounces. here we go. You have just given a family that I know and love the right to sue the federal government because did you watch this story about when the rock man, when the IRS came down and confiscated everything he had in his building no, I didn't. to get the money that, that he was owed? Yeah. Well, he had piles of $1 bills. It wasn't like everybody said, oh, we paid him in quarters, yeah. no. But he had buckets of silver coins, mercury dimes, the, the quarters, the 50 cents. pre-65. Oh, pre, oh yeah. Oh yeah, all of it. Buckets and buckets of it that wasn't to go with the IRS. The IRS took it. How long the ago family, was this? When they came with the Brinks truck down uh, the ball ground, like 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, when they came down to get yeah. what he owed them. Well, by the time they did the audit, and by the time they had to bring him back almost all the money they took, they didn't return the silver buckets of coins. Oh, they coins. didn't. They, so, they brought back dollars. Oh, yes. So you oh, think somebody, about that. Oh, somebody made a fortune off of that. You think about that. Now, 20 years ago, it wasn't worth $20,000. So 20 years ago, that's 2004. It's probably worth 10. Yeah. 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 Okay. But the family stood there begging them, let us write you a check for this amount. 
because they counted it at face value 50 cents a dollar you know a dollar 50 by the 50 cent pieces now if it was even worth what you're saying yeah they literally stole 10 times the money that they were owed right and then had to come back and bring them a refund and then they owed him a very small amount because they did, and, and what they got him on was uh, bookkeeping wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And so once they did the books, then everything was great, yeah. except that they had left with those buckets of coins. Nobody knows what happened to those. Why, well, I wonder what happened to them. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I, I don't know if this is the truth, but, but I, I know there was at least one coin company when you go into the bank, for example, and you have those machines that you mm -hmm. pour them in, and I don't know if it was in the banks, but you could also do them in standalone. They would weigh the coins in there and kick to the side the pre-1969s really? because they have a different weight to them. And that's how they were, because most people didn't realize because they've just not been educated. The government did yeah, it silently. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So the, th the point is, is any of you, like I had Will go through uh, years ago, because one of the things I've tried to teach my kids over time, more so him, because he was at the age when I really started kind of see that ultimately in our lifetime issues were going to come about. I said, look, go through, the, I had a five gallon water jug. So he went through, I said, I want you to go through all of these, you know, because he had the time. I said, separate them. I don't care if it takes you three months or four months, mm -hmm. but if you'll separate anything that's pre-1969, I'll split the value with you. Wow. So in that bucket that I'd accumulated, just throwing change into it, the pre-1969 value I think was around $900 in coins that we had in there. Now this wow. was 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the point being is if you have any collectible coins, you've got family that's got pre-1965 in a bucket that they had, the silver content in that is worth a lot more mm -hmm. than just spending money. So you got to be careful, you know, it's like little, ki little kids around the house, cream. right? Little kids find it, they're like, oh, there's a quarter, and they go put it in to get gum out of the gumball machine. That quarter could be worth a dollar fifty to mm -hmm. two dollars. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, something to think about. But that that's what has occurred, and it's occurred slowly. We ended up here slowly. Right. Did he end up getting interested in coins because of what you showed him? A little bit. Not? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he's been so busy with football, basketball. I think, it's, I think kids ought to be because when you, you know, sometimes I get a wheat penny and I just throw it aside and keep it just because yeah. it's a wheat penny. You know, yeah. I have no idea what it's worth, but I know that it's it's unusual. So yeah. Yeah, he did. I, I did pay him in silver coins one time when they were about eleven dollars a coin, and I told him I said you can take silver coins and keep this as an investment from a long term standpoint. And which I really don't want to give to you. I'm just kind of treating you as <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to teach you. I said, if you do sell them, sell them back to me. Yeah. Uh, or I can pay you in money. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you don't really need the money right now. Yeah. And uh, so the other day he asked me, he's like, how much are those silver coins worth? I'm like, $33, $34. He's like, that's a pretty good return, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah hold on to them because I think, yeah. who knows what they'll do in the next 12 yeah. months. Yeah. But Did you ever think you'd live to see gold do what it's doing? No. I can remember when it was like 800 and I just thought, well, that's just impossible. That's just crazy. I remember buying some at 500. Wow. And um, so, but there were some really wise people. And, 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 and here's the problem. You know, you, 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 <laughs> you read the Bible front to back. And the first time I read it, I think how stupid these Israelites are, right? Like I was young, I didn't quite have enough wisdom and with much wisdom comes much sorrow. And then as you get older, you realize it's like, okay, we're all the Israelites, right? Because it's our human nature. You know, things are good. We, we, we stop living with the details and paying attention to like we should have. And if we're lucky, God smacks us real quick, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He disciplines those that he loves. Mm -hmm. And that gets your attention, right? So that you, you, you focus on what really matters. Everything in our society today teaches us to be narcissistic, to hold on to bitterness, to hate others, uh, be who you want to be. And Jordan Peterson said something here recently. Did he talk about being a me, me, me generation? Uh, I think he, he has at some point, but okay. it didn't, like it didn't stand out. I enough wondered to me about to really that because I see that every single day. You know, yeah, I see it every day. It's me. Well, he, he put something out on, on the fact that, you know, we're, we're I, I guess this is the month of pride or whatever. That's what he was talking about. Yeah. And, and pride is not a good thing. It's all about me, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And his argument's like, look, you know, we're always negotiating in who we are in society, right? In a marriage, we have to negotiate. You have to give up some of who you are mm -hmm. 
to be together or you end up being a little bit of tyrant. And he talked about if you abdicate responsibility, um, then tyrants are always going to pick up that, that responsibility. So mm -hmm. I lost train of thought of where I was going because my mind splintered in about five me. different ways that about I could talk me. about. But, uh, but yeah, me generation, what he just talked about is, is the fact that, you know, yeah, God gives us our natural strengths and talents. But what I have learned is your greatest strengths are also your greatest weakness, right? They really are. Mm -hmm. Because if you're. Are you and Holly opposites? Does she have a strength you don't? Do you have a strength she doesn't? Oh, yeah. She's patience of Job. And I am one of the most impatient people that you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. Now, I've learned to temper that over mm -hmm. years, but. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll I'll look at something. Lord, give me wisdom right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Lord, give me yeah. wisdom right now. But with, you know, that's one thing that I have constantly prayed for. And with much wisdom comes much sorrow, and it takes courage to actually desire wisdom. And I, I'm look, I'm the biggest fool on the face of the earth. I just try to, I end up in the right place if I do by God's grace. Mm -hmm. Oh, what I was going to about the prophecy in the Bible. So you had people that that. God put on their heart biblically from the standpoint to warn generations about what was coming. Some of them never saw it come to fruition in their lifetime, right? And I believe that that's by God's grace. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are people who have been warning for some time about where we're headed as a country. Have Human you ever been terrified? Because right now I'm terrified. Well, sorry about my phone. That's there. okay. That's okay. Um, no, I'm beyond the point of, of being terrified. Fear doesn't do you any good, okay? It, it doesn't. Fear, fear causes us to make emotional decisions. I, I, to I wrote speculate. that book. <laughs> Yeah, I did it. It causes us fear to... Fear caused me to make a terrible decision, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. so one of the things you notice about what politicians do and what companies do, and I see this a lot in the investment world, is there's people who are on one extreme, Okay, that are marketing greed. It's like if you don't own this stock, you know, inflation's going to wipe you out. You have to own it. You're going to miss mm -hmm. out. That's mm -hmm. greed. They're playing on your greed for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. Then you have others that are playing on your fear for their mm -hmm. own benefit. The world's coming to an end. Oh, the only thing that I happen to sell is gold. And by gosh, you better buy it because mm -hmm. that's the only thing that's going to mm -hmm. stand. Mm -hmm. There's some truth in their argument. There's some truth in their argument over here. But what you really have to do, and this is because I've got a, a big webinar coming up next weekend. I've been thinking about this a lot. Just wake up 3 o'clock in the morning and pray like, okay, Lord, what can I share that can help somebody? So what we have to do is we have to really look at the situation we're in. We have to look at it with courage. We have to plan for the future like it's not going to happen in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once you develop that plan, it's okay, well, can I buy some insurance against a currency collapse? And how much can I afford to do that? Can I afford to, to protect myself against long-term care? And when you're strategic in that thought, thought process and you, you fight that urge for fear or greed and you set that down on each side, that's where the path of wisdom is. God tells us time and time again, do not fear, mm -hmm. right? So as a believer, the one thing that I can say is, all right, Lord, I'm trying my best to find the path of wisdom. Please light it for me. Help me to not fear and help me to not be greedy, right? Because you get those temptations and those mm -hmm, temptations, mm -hmm. if they just pull you off one degree, one degree, like when we go offshore fishing, if you're 50 miles offshore and you're one degree off on that compass, instead of ending up in Savannah, you might, you know, Richmond Hill, mm -hmm. most people may not know where Richmond Hill I is. Do. But you may end up in Savannah instead mm -hmm. of Richmond Hill, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's way off the mark. So that's the hard part about what we do. And, and that's why it's so important to think and pray. Now, once you develop a plan, okay, now you got to take action. Mm -hmm. And the thing that you have to understand in a situation where our country is headed right now, only in hindsight can we look back and see the perfect decision, right? Only in hindsight can you look back and see the perfect decision. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many people are caught up. Well, if I'd have just put all my money in NVIDIA, I'd be rich. Mm -hmm. Well, right? Mm -hmm. Go look at the, you know, maybe it's a blessing to you that that didn't happen. Because go look at the outcome of the lottery winners and just mm -hmm. how much misery that brings oh to gosh. their life. Oh, right? my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
because you have to be able to handle that. And if you can't manage something small, we can't manage mm -hmm. something big. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have to have that parable of the talents. And it goes back, like in the parable of the talents, you have the one person that's scared to death of the, you know, I've got a shrewd master and I don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. And then you got the others that go out and they try to do the best that they can do with it. Mm -hmm. And they don't let fear keep them from taking action. And uh, guess what happens when the master comes back? Who gets berated the most? Well, I had good intentions. I didn't want to lose your money. Mm -hmm. So here you go. You get it back. And he's like, get out of here, and takes it from that person, hands it to another. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a lesson that I'm still trying to understand and just all of the avenues that that can uh, come into your life. But that's the problem with fear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I... I don't like fear, and I don't like what it does to you. Oh, no. But you can I, be controlled by fear and greed. Oh, yeah. I'm driving a 10-year-old car. Right. I've never driven a 10-year-old car. Well, unless it was a super sport or something like that. I'm driving a 10 year old car because I look at the new cars and I think I really want a new car. Well, mine has great maintenance, has Michelin tires, gets the oil changed all the time, da 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 da, doesn't have many miles on it. Why do I want a new car? Just because I do, you know, but I don't want to. Oh, I'm I fighting that off right now, too. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah. That's crazy. Mine's fine. I like it. It does everything it needs to do, but I want a new car. Yeah. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I, I think fear sometimes is good. I'm fear of the unknown, and I said until November the 5th, I'm barely buying groceries. I mean, I'm not buying anything. I'm not right. spending any money. But as a realtor, I wish you could do seminars on building your own wealth, and we talked about that right. so many times, building your own wealth. You don't begin to build your own wealth by having a paid-for vehicle and deciding, well, I kind of like that sports car, too. Let's buy that that has a payment right. on it because then that changes your house payment, that changes yeah. what you qualify for, that changes your interest rate, that changes everything. But I'd love to have a new car. And I go through the dealers about twice a week, look, but I'm not gonna buy anything yet. I'm scared, I'm scared. Well, you know, it's funny, because I, I actually- I'm really nervous. I, uh, you know, and it's amazing how you can justify things. So I've been driving my truck seven years, and the water pump's going out on it again. Mm -hmm. As long as I don't have oh, a long trip, Oh, I remember when you traded fine. your Suburban, and I wanted to buy it so bad, and then you said it needed a bunch of water. Oh, no, no, no. You didn't want that <laughs> Suburban, I'm telling you. <laughs> See, no, that's when I got mine was when yeah. you traded yours, so I've had it years. <laughs> well, I drove through. I was like, yeah, I'd love to have a Suburban again, and I'd love to have an F-250 truck. And I look, and I'm like, I'm just not going to spend the difference, yeah, right? Yeah, like, I mean. Yeah. The Put can a I, water pump in your car. Can I afford it? Yeah, it's like new water pump. I called the dealerships like 750 bucks to replace the, water, dealers, uh, the water pump. And I'm like, nah, I'm just fine with the truck that I got. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. it, gets, it gets me there yeah, and yeah. it's only got 110,000 miles on it. Let's see if I can get 200 out of it. And you know, you and I having the fear of spending all that money on another vehicle has changed the, the dollar market for cars because used cars were bringing over book value, yeah. way over book value, because nobody was trading them. Everybody was keeping them, repairing them, just yeah. like you would do. I would do, mine's gotta have brakes now, you know, instead of saying, oh, it needs brakes, I'll just go buy a new one. No, not today, <laughs> not today. But it's weird, it's weird. When you, when you talk to different generations, are we all, like I'm that old generation, then there's the middle generation, then there's the young generation. The young generation, are they getting nervous yet or are they just happy living in mama's basement? What are they doing? So with the, I, I've had one of the most interesting things happen to me over the past 12 months and I still sit there and I go, Lord, how in the world did I end up in this position? Yep. So with the, you know, being chosen as the referral, uh, um, refer the person that Peak Prosperity and Dr. Chris Martin refers people to. Right. I have met people all over the country and had consultations with people all over the country. Mm -hmm. It's the most incredible thing. I haven't worked this hard in my life mm -hmm. in a long time. Mm -hmm. But one thing that's amazing to me is I've realized there are people in Seattle, Washington. There are people in Hawaii. There are people in Alaska. There are people in California, New York, Maine, Michigan, Texas, but you think Texas is going to be pretty conservative anyway, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. They're absolutely terrified about what's going on in the country. Yeah. And here's the thing, 90% of these people that I'm meeting are Christian. Yeah, that's so weird. Everybody we're selling houses to, you know what we have in common? 
they're Christian. Yeah. It blows my mind. Yeah. It, I think, I think if anything, this disaster the country's in has brought us closer to God because you gotta trust something that you can trust. Well, t it's weird. Tucker Carlson had an interview with Sean Ryan that I was listening to yesterday, and Sean Ryan's former military guy. Um, anyway, I, I, I love to read books and I love to listen to 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 people talk truthfully and honestly and have the courage to say something wrong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And most of these are two and a half hour, three hour conversations. So I'll get on the tractor, I'll get on the lawnmower. And I have to be careful because sometimes on the weekend it's like I want to listen to this interview. I'm like, hey Holly, I'm going to go work. And she's like, but spend time with me. And I'm like, yeah, I probably should be spending time yeah. here. So, um, um, and I thought, lost what I was going to say. No, about. But anyway, I was listening to their interview and um, it'll come back to me in just a minute, <laughs> forgive me. So, but, but what I am noticing is, is young people are so frustrated. Oh, what, what he said is we have a battle between truth and deception, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's what's taking place right now. So mm -hmm. on one side, and, and here's the problem, you go back to what Jordan Peterson says, the truth is so important. He says, tell the truth mm -hmm. or at least don't lie. Mm -hmm. Now, there are times that I don't, if, if somebody asks me a question, a friend of mine, and it's not, you know, I'm not going to tell them the whole truth. And it might hurt somebody's feelings. Because or... it hurts their feelings and it's not going to make a difference in their life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But if I have a friend of mine that's headed down a bad path, I'm going to tell them the whole truth. I had a conversation with somebody the other day and I was like, Lord, how do I breach this? And they literally just asked me. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you really want me to an answer honestly? Or do you want me to tell you what you want to hear? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, I, I'm asking you because I want to know. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm only going to tell you because I care enough about you to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I told them the truth. And of course it made them mad. <laughs> and oh, yeah. they called me the next day and said that they I talked about it. And they, they shared it with yeah. their wife. And they thanked me for having the courage to direct them because they'd asked five of their friends the same thing and I was the only one that answered honestly. honestly. But when they called their four other friends, mm -hmm and told them what I said, uh, two of them said, well, yeah, I agree 100% what he said. Mm -hmm. The other two's mm -hmm. like, that was me, right? Yeah. So um, we have to care about people, and the Bible, Bible tells us iron is sharpening iron. So we've got a battle between deception, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Look, they tell you to trust the science, and science ah! tells, the, sci oh. <laughs> the science tells you there are men and there are women. Yeah. Right? There's an XY chromosome, XX chromosome. It's been a long time since I've thought about that. But we know that. I mean, you can tell. Now, if you, if you want to live in a different way, that's your choice, right? That's the great thing about America. We have, we have the freedom to live that way if you want to, but we should also have the freedom to suffer the consequences of our actions, mm -hmm. uh, both good and bad. Um, we're told things are great, but everybody's miserable across the country. Going back to your question about young kids, mm -hmm. young kids are so depressed right now, and I'm talking 35 or under, 35 to 50, and I'm talking people that have got two to four kids that have saved well, mm -hmm. that are making good money, are gonna have to work till they're 75. Mm -hmm because the cost of education, the cost of housing, the cost of everything is going up so substantially. And these are people who are making really good money. I mean, I'm talking in the top 10% mm -hmm. of society. Mm -hmm. And they can't afford to, to help their kids buy houses. You know, they, they got their kids maybe out of college with no debt. Mm -hmm. And that's a heck of an accomplishment now. And, um, and that's government policies that have caused us to be sure. there. So something has to break in our country, but the problem is, is that Jordan Peterson talks about if you live in deception, then your view of the world becomes di distorted. You become basically prideful in your outlook because when you lie, you are trying to control the outcome to bend the world to your will, right? Mm -hmm. This is the way I see the world. Well, none of us see the world completely truthfully. That's why debate and two are better than one and that's why both should, sides should have discussion because even in our local community, you've got those that want to shut the door behind them 
and you got those that want to build houses next, uh, you know, on top of each other all over the place. Mm -hmm. Well, somewhere in the middle is appropriate because we need to have, we've got to have some negotiation to where we have affordable housing on a local level so that that our kids can live. Affordable right? homes they can buy. That they can buy. That they can buy. That yeah. they can buy. Yeah. And then we want to have control growth so that it doesn't get out of hand. Mm -hmm. There, there mm -hmm. is a way to do that, mm -hmm. but those on the left mm -hmm. have to have to give up something, and those on the right have to give up something. Mm -hmm. And that's where we negotiate to meet in that middle, and and it's mutually beneficial for all. But the problem is, is we've got so many in in power now that have justified their actions, that have convinced themselves, they have accepted these lies and they, they're so distorted, they can't see the path of wisdom or the mm -hmm. path of truth. Mm -hmm. So we have to tell the truth or we have to at least not lie. So this battle between the American people who is experiencing the truth and living the pain of the truth of what's taken place and then those that are in power that don't have the courage to admit that they've made mistakes because that means they're gonna lose their position of power or living through deception. And they're hoping that that deception is gonna overcome the truth, but mm -hmm. truth always overcomes in the end. It may take a long mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. but the truth will always overcome in the end mm -hmm. because, because the pain of deception is gonna overwhelm those who've accepted those lies. And you know, and it's what, you know, my people perish because they, they don't love the truth, right? I had a conversation with somebody yesterday and, and she said, did having cancer change your life? And I said, oh my God. I said, I had just gone through truly hell on earth, two years of hell on earth. And then I found out I had cancer and I was like, the hell on earth was worse than the cancer, but the cancer made me appreciate that I made it through the hell on earth. Mm -hmm. which was really weird to me because I was like, God, why did you do this to me? Why did you put me in this position? Why did you let somebody do that to me? Why did you allow me to be that stupid? And then I got cancer and I mm -hmm. was like, okay. And it taught me that this was a piece of cake compared to the cancer and just get on with it, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like now every time something, I get something checked, I'm like, Phew, nervous wreck. But I made it through that, I made it through cancer. I can surely make it through this disaster in DC. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it gave me some hope because I have been really scared. Mm -hmm. And what really scared me was looking at clients that I couldn't even put in their first time homes. That's what I did for all these years. Yeah. And for two people working in America today, doing what they should, not driving big sports cars, not driving new cars, doing what they should, we can't put them in a house. No. And that, that really unnerved me. Like last November was like reality check because last November I was terminating contracts to keep my friends from going overboard and ended up divorced and hating each other because of a house payment. I said, it's not worth it guys. Just keep doing what you're doing. Unless your landlord goes crazy on you, just keep what you're doing. Yeah. And, and that's crazy that in America we can have two adults working with no children left at home and nobody else to take care of but themselves and they can't do a house payment. Yeah. And, and that, that was the biggest wake up call of all, you know, because I said I no longer can do what I loved, which is helping first time buyers. Yeah. And we are struggling with that. We are struggling. So we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about this book because we're going to be um, talking about this at the Historical Society in Ball Ground. And I told Paul before we went on the air, when the Indians were removed on the Trail of Tears, there were two, two big things that happened. Um, Chief Van, who I've talked about and asked y'all to go over to the museum and to visit his home, when I tell you what happened to him because he was a scoundrel, you will go, wow, being a scoundrel caught up with him. So you can never hide from being a scoundrel. And also the land, Cherokee County used to encompass all of Forsyth County. Cherokee County was that big. And then when they split it off, Forsyth County became Forsyth County. At one time, the government paid one of the chiefs of the Indian tribe 
$12,500 for 160 acres. And I said, man, that was a lot of money, wasn't it? And then I thought about it, it was $78 an acre, but in the 1800s, that, that was, was a, a lot, lot of money. money. That was a lot of money. So today, the $78 an acre for South County property is selling for about 50000 an acre. So think, put your money aside, save, <laughs> and, and one day you will, I think we're going to come back around. I hope that the economy is going to come back around and we're going to get another opportunity. We'll see, and we'll talk about that when we come back. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> my grown-up, grown-up, every way and every way, guarantee you. You're my grown-up, and I know you're there. I'm your grown-up, and you know I care. Yes, it's you and me and me and you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you. masterpiece or just making memories writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow whatever you do in life farmers is here to protect it for all your insurance needs call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge When I tell y'all about the Chief Van House and how he was so wealthy and he had this, he had slaves, he had this, da 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 he was very, very wealthy, but he had no morality and he had no scruples. And actually, Chief Van was murdered because his sister set up his murder, because he murdered a person one morning and as he sat at his sister's breakfast table saying, I'm going to kill somebody else before I finish this bottle of liquor she made a decision and she chose somebody to help her and the next morning as he walked out the door they shot him dead hmm. he was 41 41 or 42 years old and so when i go to the chief van house i look at him as all the wealth he had all the things he had and when i was reading the truth about his life i went wow wow 
He was mean. He was evil. He, he murdered Indians. He mu murdered white men. He murdered his slaves. He murdered everybody. He had no morals and I didn't no. Know that. But he had lots of money. Yeah. He had lots and lots of money. And his home is here um, at in Chatsworth. And I've visited it many times. I actually decorated my house with the colors of the Cherokee because of a visit I made to the Chief Van House. But when yeah. I researched him and I found out that, yes, he was wealthy, he was half Indian. He was 50-50, um, so he was half <laughs> Indian. And it was so amazing to read that this man, he had china, he had silver, he had crystal, he had all the things that, you know, in the 1800s, that was a big it's deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal, and he had wealth all over several counties, but especially in Cherokee County. Well, he was murdered in Cherokee County, and it was because his sister just got sick of his attitude and him sitting there eating breakfast, talking about he was right. gonna murder somebody else before he finished that bottle of liquor. And she just thought about it and I thought, wow. So you really can't get by with being a scoundrel because either your sister will take care of you <laughs> or the Lord will, yeah. <laughs> I don't know which. But it was so interesting because I've always almost admired Chief Van till I really did the history and did mm -hmm. the checking. So. Sometimes you can look at somebody and say, well, they're really cool and they're really, and then you find out. Uh, I'll give you an example. My example today is the New York DA, Alvin Bragg, who makes about 150000 a year, but he's worth about $24 million. Okay, do the math. Look, I'm going to tell you do this. Do the math. <laughs> that, that, that doesn't happen. I know it doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. How did that happen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It blew my mind when I saw his net worth. Because, you know, I research everything. And I was going, what? Yeah, if you make 150000 a year and you save 10% of your your income, let's say you're, you're 24, 25, you save 10%. Let's say you got a, four, a company that matches 4%. You could accumulate two to five million. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But not how much? A bunch. He had yachts. He had, he had homes. He had... He had so much stuff, it was way over what his income of yeah. could have ever yeah. generated. Way over. And and maybe he had rich parents. I don't think so. Well, I mean, but, it could have know, been a trust fund, maybe, but still. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that, that, would be not, that would be public yeah. information. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and I just thought, oh, my gosh. You know, we don't know. And, and it's like after reading about Chief Van, he really acquired wealth by murdering and taking from other people. Mm -hmm. And when I read about that, I thought, oh, my gosh. Because in today's world, what we're seeing happen to those young home buyers and to those that we're not murdering them, but we are slamming the brakes on their lifestyle. We're slamming the brakes on what they can acquire because we did some stupid things and our economy's gone crazy. Well, I mean, the reality of the, the matter is, is if you set up a society for your own benefit because you're a corrupt politician that that puts such a burden on the life of a younger generation mm -hmm. that suicide rates go up, mm -hmm. drug addiction rates go up, you know, the court of law is not going to convict you for that, but you you helped get provide for a society that that led to the death of those. Mm -hmm. I mean there, there's no doubt about it. I mean it's and, and here's the thing. We know they're lying. Mm -hmm. They know yeah. that yeah. we know that they're lying. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, no, that line is, we know their line, they know uh, their line, and they know that we know that they're lying. Yeah. And they don't yeah. even care anymore. They don't yeah. even try to hide it. No, no. Do you know one of the things that I think opened the eyes for one of the worst hit states in the nation in Alaska, the um, resources of natural resources that Biden put a slam on killed the economy in Alaska because those people who live there and who make a commitment to live in a really harsh, harsh environment, they were getting a check once a year for the, because of the fuel that was, was exported from Alaska. Okay, that stopped. He slammed the brakes on all of that. So the people who were expecting to get that check once a year that would help them pay their property taxes now are renting something because they can't afford their property taxes because even in Alaska, as harsh as the, the oh my gosh, the weather, they're so bad, as, as bad as it is, people still went there to work and have homes and their taxes that have gone up, their home values have gone up, 
it's going up to a point that they can't pay for them. Well, Alaska's already the number one nation, number one state in the nation for suicide. Suicide, incest, and alcoholism. Mm -hmm. Those three things. And it's because of the environment they've lived in. They've lived in poverty. The, the um, oh my gosh, it, it's so sad. And I said, if you look at Alaska, it's such a beautiful area. Have you ever been? No, I've not. That's on my list. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. June through September, it is so beautiful, but it is so brutal after that. So people who made a commitment to go there and to open businesses and to provide their trades, you know, from plumbers to home builders to whatever, they are paying the price because of the current administration. Well, we're all paying the price. Do you buy mm -hmm. fuel today? Yes. You know, I filled up last week because it was just 311 and I thought, well, I got a deal. It was 349 the day before. Yeah. So I filled up at 311. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Yeah. And then people say, oh, well, you could drive a little car. No, I couldn't. I value my life and I can't drive a little car because I'm terrified I'd get hit and right. I'd be crushed like a gnat. So, so I choose to drive a big vehicle because I can, mm -hmm. but then they put you in a position that you can't because you can't buy gas. I have to choose where and when I go. It's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. I mean, you can look at the restaurant numbers right now. They're slowing down mm -hmm. dramatically. People are having to cut back. You look at the revisions on the job numbers. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's clear as day that this administration's been lying about the headline numbers, mm -hmm. but the headline numbers is all that Wall Street cares about. Because, yeah. you know, when you when you come out of a system that there were mostly trustworthy people in leadership, you didn't have to look over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then all of a sudden, there are people out there that are trusting, and when you've got corrupt people that are giving you this information, you trust it until the pain of trusting it uh, forces you to start having to do the extra work yourself. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, uh, and I think, it, you know, it's the joke for half the population now. It's like, yeah, can you really believe those numbers? And then they revise them down when nobody's paying attention. Yeah. And the truth comes out. The oh, economy's yeah. not as strong as they're telling us. No. But I mean, food prices, I mean, just last week, Holly and I, look, I, I, I live on a budget for so long that you get in a habit of just being tight yeah, with your money, yeah. right? And um, so, so we go to just Holly and I go to uh, Captain. Captain. I don't know if D's. I should say this. Yeah, Captain, Captain D's. D's. I love it. Yeah. And Holly loves to go to Captain D's I every do now too. and then. My I don't eat it that often. It's I about once it. every six months we'll go. Yeah. And I pulled up, and you know, she, you know, she, I look. I don't look at prices when I go to eat at fast food. I'm like, yeah, I want this and I want that. Okay. And Holly's like. Did you pay attention? You should have gotten this. And I'm like, well, okay. And then she orders, and it was like $24. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. We used to take a family of five yeah. To, yeah. to Captain D's and eat for $24. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to blow your mind. I picked up two pizzas, two medium pizzas in Jasper Saturday to take back to the office. Two medium pizzas, y'all get this. $38. No way. I almost Two passed medium out. pizzas? Two medium pizzas. I go here to Pizza King, and we're running out of time, but I go here to Pizza King, and you get a we're meal right. with uh, breadsticks, wings, pizza, and salad for $38. <laughs> yeah. So I looked at those two puny pizzas in the seat of my car, and I'm taking back to the office to feed our crew, and I go, I'm glad the crew ain't hungry today because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I couldn't have afforded to feed them. So... Thank you for being here today. Tell people about your podcast real quick. Yeah, so if you guys want to kind of check it out, it's Peak Prosperity, Dr. Chris Martinson. I've followed him since around 2006, 2007, and, and he really kind of came back on the scene during COVID because he, he had, um, I can't remember what his degree is in pathology, and he, he understands all of that stuff. Everything that he was laying out is as clear as day that it was true now. Mm -mm. He was censored like crazy, but he's just an individual. I like him um, as far as just trying to, to communicate to people what's going on. So mm -hmm. The truth. Um, the truth will stand. The truth will stand when nothing else will. So we do a weekly podcast. We talk about things that most people aren't willing to talk about. We don't have the answers to everything. Um, uh, but you can find it on Rumble, YouTube. YouTube's a little bit hard. It's funny. Our videos got knocked down I'm sure. uh, uh, the last two weeks the for, hate speech, the for hate yeah. speech. Get I know, this. I know, because you tell My the truth. My last name, Kiker. Yeah. 
is based off of a derivative of, of kike, which uh -huh. is, uh, I mean, that kieker, I think, yeah, is what it was. Yeah. That's a German curse word for Jews. Yeah. So we got blocked off on that, but they oh, got it fixed funny. now. Isn't that, that is weird? Funny. So apparently my last name's a... <laughs> All right, check him out. We've got to go. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>